Good morning, you guys. Look what I found on the beach this morning. I was just out for a paddle, stand up paddle board. I'm just finishing the retreat we hosted and I was walking on the beach this morning and I had this download and I was actually thinking about this might be valuable for you. And the sand dollar reminded me of, you know, money is everywhere. <laughs> it's about being resourceful. And then it reminded me of a conversation we had Hi Gloria, we had a, had a conversation at the retreat yesterday, and one of our one of our um, sisters she asked, you know, Jen, what's the secret to having what's the secret to having a millionaire mindset? What what do you need to shift in order to have a magnetic money mindset? And it was it was interesting to me because I actually went through my process, and I thought it would be valuable for you because I shared it with her, and the entire group thought it was very supportive. So I wanted to share it with you. Okay, so this is the first thing. I think money mindset gets kind of esoteric and, and it, we get lost in the energetics sometimes instead of getting really anchored to a step-by-step -step process that's you know, in our logical mind also and that we can actually anchor to, right? So I'm gonna split this up into two, into two sections. The first is the energetics of a money mindset. The second is the logistics of a money mindset. So before we even do that, I wanna share one thing. The thing I want to share is it's not the money that most people want. It's what's on the other side of the money that people are wanting to create. And so we get really attached to like money as an object and money is merely an exchange of energy. It's an energy exchange and it's an exchange for something of value. So on the other side of money, there's something that we want. So when we focus on the money instead of what we want on the other side of the money is where we block all of the abundance. But when we can identify what it is and what the emotion and the feeling is on the other side of, of money that we want, we can energetically align with it, manifest it, and then call it in in a step-by-step -step process. The universe works miracles like that. It's like, it's amazing. And I've learned this over and over again, anchoring to evidence when, you know, literally going from having nothing and having to be resourceful and energetically calling in and then in a step-by-step -step way. So that's the first principle I wanna share. And then the formula is simple. There's usually four reasons on the other side of money that people want, okay? Usually four. And I'm gonna break that down for you. And then maybe you can start to identify what it is that you want on the other side of money. And there's no right or wrong here, right? We're all different, we're all unique. We all have different intentions and values. And so there's no right or wrong. But generally, on the other side of money, usually people want, number one, influence. Having the capacity to have influence over something or a circumstance or people. Number two is fame. People want fame on the other side of money. Number three is impact. Sometimes people, instead of you know wanting the actual money, they want the money that can bring an impact, that can maybe create something magical in the world, right? And then the fourth and final is something that is very interesting that people associate as a negative, and I think it's a positive, and it's power. So money can bring power, the feeling of empowerment, right? Feeling safe and secure to me is empowering, right? So there's there's usually four different things people want on the other side of money, not money itself. I mean, you know, a lot of times people think that they want the champagne, the, the nice fancy cars, the ni nice fancy houses, and that's all great, and you can want that. But what does that create in your life, right? What do you get to create on the other side of money? So those are the four things. And when you can identify which one you feel most aligned with, it might be one, it might be all, right? Then we can start to call on that emotion. Comfort, beautiful. So there's your, you know, what you want on the other side of the actual dollar, right? The actual object, the energy of comfort, safety, nurturing, security. That's beautiful, Gloria. So if that's what we want, we get to manifest and energetically create spaces of comfort and align our energy. Thanks, Diana, impact, beautiful. Thank you for, for saying that. I think impact is one of mine as well. Um, and so if you can start to embody the emotion of impact, where in your life have you created impact? Where do you feel impactful, Diana? And start to bring yourself into that every single moment of the day that you bring your, when yourself, when you start to get out of it, bring yourself back to what that would feel like. And then you get to future pull. So you get to imagine right? That you're the future version of yourself, but your highest self impacting however you want to impact. And you start to embody the emotion of what that feels like energetically in your body. 
Does it feel warm? Does it feel exciting? Does your heart race? Do you feel proud? What is the emotion that you feel when you're in that impact? Okay. So when you can start to embody that, that's how you energetically call it in. It's really fun. And I actually encourage people, um, when my husband and I were manifesting the speech house, right? And we, we knew we wanted to be here. We were manifesting our ranch, manifesting things that we wanted, manifesting a nonprofit, manifesting things that we wanted to create. We would actually literally put ourselves visually in that space. And, and when we were here on vacation, we would put our feet in the sand and visualize and feel into what that would feel like to own the house here, to have the impact that we could have in this community here, to start a nonprofit here, right? We would call that in together. And then every day check in on that and come into that emotion before I did anything else in the day. And you can do that alone. You can do that with a partner. You can do that in a group of community. You can do that in a sisterhood like we do in our retreats and in our group programs, right? And so doing that first every day is embodying and getting in the emotion of what you want to create on the other side of money, how it feels, how it feels in your body, how it feels in your heart, how it feels in your soul and, and imagine what would be possible in that emotion. Okay. So that's the energetic piece of becoming a money magnet. So when we can, we can make money neutral and detach from it as negative or positive and use it as a tool for impact, as a tool for comfort, as a tool for influence, as a tool for whatever it is that's on the other side of it. That's when money loses that negative charge and actually neutralizes. And you can only create more money when it's in that neutral place. It's really hard to attach yourself to something and make it positive or negative and then call more in. It's really challenging to do that, but neutralizing it is the key. So once you identify that, what you want to do, have you guys ever felt that way that money's like super uh, triggering? A lot of people are really triggered by money. We had a lot of money mindset, money coaching this weekend. Are you guys, is anyone triggered by money? Making more of it, not feeling worthy of it? I'm just curious. It's being afraid of it, being afraid if they'll lose it, being afraid that they'll get it and it won't stay, <sighs> right? Those fears are energetically keeping it away. But when you can neutralize it, you can call it in, right? Okay. The next part I want to shift into is I want to shift into so ne so Diana, are you still watching? Gloria, you're still watching. If you're still watching, let put a number one if you've ever um, had like a money block with it being like money is evil, money is the root of all evil, money doesn't grow on trees. Put a number one if you've ever had those stories come up for you. I'm just curious, or if money feels scary for you, or if money feels like you shouldn't, you're not worthy of it, or you shouldn't have it, or you. Any of those stories that we create that are usually ancestral and not even our stories are just passed on from our generations to generations. Okay. Me as a single mom, I don't deserve to live without all the heaviness. Yeah. It's a worthiness conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, you know my story. I was a single mom too. I was a single mom too. And Gloria, what's yours? What, what is that big money block? I'm just curious if it's shifted for you because I think I remember what it was. Okay, so while you guys are commenting, the next thing I'm gonna share is the strategic way to do this. Waiting for a rich prince. Oh yeah, that story. That was an ingrained story for a lot of women. We get to rewrite that because we get to be our own Prince Charming, Princess Charming. <laughs> and once these, these things are, um, once you realize how resourceful we are, you know, I believe that money is everywhere. It's just a matter of resourcefulness. And you know, there's plenty of stories that I can anchor to to show you that if you want that. Um, and I can share that with you, but I want to move into the step-by-step -step process of, ac of aligned action and that magnetism. So, so we'll use Diana for an example here. So Diana, if you're wanting to create impact, right? And you want to align with that emotion of impact. What I do in the morning is I energetically call in what I'm trying to create. I get back in that emotion. And then I literally write down in my journal before I leave my bed, what is the one thing, not five, not 10, not two. What is the one thing today that my action can match that energy? So what action can I create that will match the emotion and energy of impact? What's the one thing I can do? And some, and I, I think people get really stuck and it has to be this big thing. And, and that's the issue. Like the, the, the universe doesn't matter how big or small the act, the universe answers your call, whether it's a big action or a small action, it's just you inviting it in and deciding that you're taking action is how that energetic alignment happens, right? So if we're sitting around waiting for the prince to arrive and we're just in limbo, the universe is going to ignore our desires. But if we actually take a step to align 
to potentially, hey, Gloria, maybe you take a step to investing in maybe um, something like looking at an investment opportunity for an IRA. Maybe you only put, maybe you only put a dollar a month in it, but just taking action, right? Or a 401k, maybe you put $5 in a 401k. Maybe you put 500, maybe you put 5,000, maybe you put 5 million, who, whatever you're at. But maybe taking one step towards financial freedom for yourself independently is aligning the energy of what you want as comfort because you can comfort yourself. You don't need anyone else to comfort you, right? So Diana, if you're looking to create impact, what is one thing you can do before anything else starts the day that you can do to create impact for another hu human, for, some, for a calling you have on your heart, for a big mission you have, what is one thing you can do? So I don't get ahead of myself. I don't try to solve the world's problems with that one action. I just get into action. And some days, you know, it's, it's maybe going out to breakfast with my husband. You know, some days maybe it's um, creating a bubble bath for myself. Sometimes maybe it's reaching out to someone that I know that needs me. Sometimes maybe it's lying in bed and, you know, being intimate with my husband and having great sex, right? Whatever that is in that moment. Maybe it's making myself a decadent meal. Maybe it's, you know, going out and writing a blog. Maybe it's going out and, you know, creating a Facebook Live like this this morning, right? But this, for me, aligns me with the energy of what I want and what I want to create because I want to create impact. Actually, I want to create impact for a million women to become financially free and free of their limiting beliefs so they can live into their highest self. And if I do this first, now I'm in alignment, right? I walked out this morning and the first thing I saw is on my walk was the sand dollar. And it just reminded me that money is everywhere, right? The energy of money is everywhere. You can just choose to use it to your advantage or you can choose to push it away. And I thought that that, I, I had this conversation, part of this talk that we did at our retreat yesterday that I helped the ladies with is what I just shared with you. But my steps are, you know, first you want to clear the energy of what you want to create. You know, you really want to get in the energetic space of the energy on the other side of money. And we went through those four. So if you're just joining now, go back and listen. And then once you align with what it is that you want to create on the other side of the money, because it's not the money that you want. Money is just an object and it's dirty and gross. Like who really wants that, right? We want the energy or what's on the other side of it. Once you align with that, then you start to daily call that in and that emotion. Then the next step is to align your action, first action of the day, with the energy of the emotion that you want to create on the other side of money, right? So um, I, I would love for you for just joining to rewatch this video because it's a really powerful tool that a lot of the women here at the retreat had breakthroughs with and we went through the practice. So I just want to encourage all of you that uh, money is not good or bad, it's neutral and the energy we create on it is, is all about what's on the other side of it. All right, you guys, I hope this was supportive for you today. Let me know if it was. And thank you, Gloria, that's so sweet. I appreciate that. We're, you know, um, I, and I, I really appreciate you watching. And Diana, thank you. Realigning your belief system of how deserving and beautiful. I love that. I'd love to know what your next step is for that. Like, what are you doing to actually do that for yourself? And then Gloria, what's your next step after this video? I'd love to know. And, keeping this in my toolbox. Oh, beautiful. Thanks, Diana. And if these things are valuable for you, you know, I would invite you to, to share it because I am on a mission to create uh, impact for a million women. I can't do that alone. Right. And growing communities of women that have similar values and belief systems and are really trying to, you know, change the threshold for women of that, that ceiling, you know, elevating that ceiling so that we can live in safety and security because when women are safe and secure, we can create anything. When we feel in scarcity, we're shut down and we're in fight or flight. And our, we cannot create in fight or flight. We can only create in security and safety. And so when we're not financially safe, when we're not safe um, in our bodies, when we're not safe in our homes, when we're not, you know, when we're going paycheck to paycheck, that's not safety. And then we can't create what we're meant to create here. So that is my goal. That is my goal, is to help you create that for yourself. All right. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. Um, I'm here in St. Pete for two months. I'm going to be here all the way until August. You're going to see me on the beach all the time. So stay tuned. I'm going to start to come live a little bit more. I've been kind of um, not for a while, but I'm going to start doing it more and more now. Um, and I'll be sharing a lot of tips on not only money mindset, but step-by-step -step business practices, best net steps for your business and scaling, as well as um, information on our next retreats, information on our business courses, um, our podcast, all of that is available for free. So we have tons of free resources. And if you want more information on any of that, you can go to our website at soulascendcoaching.com. Um, and hi, Nancy. Good morning. So again, thank you for, right there. thank you for listening. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll come back and answer them. Just tag me. And then if this is helpful for you, please share it. 
Okay, bye.